got a friend of mine on the inside of the AG's office. I'm gonna do my best to get these charges going And I'm pushing the envelope on this. I really am, I'm pushing the envelope. Well, good evening, I'm Alicia Barnes. It all starts with a secret audio recording of a South Carolina sheriff sitting in a criminal defendant's living room. The recording captures the sheriff discussing attempted murder charges and promising to do everything he could to get the charges dismissed. Here's Chief Investigator Jody Barr with the Queen City News investigation. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Nobody ever the What you're about to hear is an hour-long, secretly recorded conversation between Chesterfield County Sheriff Cambo Streeter and a man named Chucky Robinson, a man whose son Devonta Robinson, also known as Squirrel, could spend the rest of his life in prison if convicted of multiple charges pending against him. The meeting with the sheriff happened inside the Robinson's Pageland home in January. Chucky Robinson recorded it. The meeting was to discuss an attempted murder investigation opened during former Sheriff J.D. Dixon's administration, a man Sheriff Streeter defeated in the last election. He was like, well, you could talk to the sheriff, but swear I can't talk to him without me. The conversation started with Robinson telling the sheriff his son's attorney, State Senator Gerald Malloy, did not want the sheriff questioning his client alone. I was like, but you know, uh, the sheriff trying to help us. He said, yeah, but that man, him talk. I know, I know. I told him, I said, I'm going to go out and. and that's what I'm saying. That's well, why I'm because they did nothing in the file. They don't, nobody has, has a version of what happened. Let me do the talk. The recording shows the sheriff went there to help, not the prosecution, but the defense. To help a man the sheriff's own investigators say tried to rob and kill Noah Avila and Tariq Adams in June 2020. That night, Avila and Adams were at a friend's house on Coon Creek Road. The case file shows Devonta Squirrel Robinson and Trey Thomas joined the party during the night. Adams and Avila told investigators Squirrel and Thomas tried to rob them. The night ended with multiple shots fired and Avila, Adams, and Squirrel each with multiple gunshot wounds. So for the record, state your name, please. Tariq Adams. Tariq Adams. A sheriff's investigator recorded this interview of Tariq Adams at the hospital hours after the shooting where he tells his side of what happened. I guess they thought I had money in my pocket okay. or something, but I told them, like, ain't got money on me. Like, you keep playing around, though, because he was trying to make it seem like he was just playing with me for fun. And he got the 32, and I'm like, hey, man, put it down. What you doing? He like, oh, what you doing? Once I do that, he jack it back real quick and cock it and put one in the head. Mm -hmm. Then when he did that, my life was threatened. I feel threatened. Like, you ain't got no choice. You about to shoot me in my face, like. So he upped it like that, and then that's when I grabbed it again. Mm. And when I did that, it went up that way, started busting in the air. And as I'm wrestling to the ground now, sir, you were like I said, uh, who, like... Who were you wrestling with? This, sir, Devontae Robinson. Devontae Robinson, okay. okay. now, sir, punch your hand at me just like you had uh -huh. now. Okay, now, this is you, him. I got the gun right here. Uh -huh. I turn it this way. Once I turn him, I wrap him around, spin him around. I get uh -huh. behind him so okay. I can put him in a choke hole so he can't try to shoot either one of us. Okay. But then, like, once he came, Noah came out, Noah tried to come out and push him too. When he came out and pushed him, Noah pushed me over and him with him. Mm. So he got to turn back around with the gun and he like, oh, and just started busting at everybody. Okay. Busting at Noah, he sent the most, like, them five shots that he got in him to Noah. And then I caught the last six in my leg because, like, okay. I pointed the gun back towards me and tried to get it off of Noah. Noah Avila was shot five times in the back. He was in surgery when investigators interviewed Adams at the hospital. Avila interviewed with investigators by phone days later. And that's when you started that's shooting when at Robinson. He, it, well, when he sandwiched the gun so he couldn't get the trigger, he was trying to get it loose so he could shoot him. And when he did, that's whenever I was afraid, and so I shot him. Okay. Because I didn't want him to shoot him. Because I know he was going to shoot him in the chest or face. Robinson, which is known by Squirrel, once he fell to the ground, he just started shooting. Yes, at me. Because when I stopped shooting, I um, immediately turned around, and that's when I started getting hit. Right when he hit the ground, he started shooting at me with the gun he was about to shoot blow with, uh, Tyreek. 
The Chesterfield County Grand Jury indicted Squirrel on multiple violent felonies, two counts of attempted murder, attempted armed robbery, and possession of a weapon during a violent crime. Crimes that, if convicted, carry a maximum combined sentence of 150 years in prison. Investigators say the victims were defending themselves from Squirrel that night. But Chucky Robinson says investigators got it wrong. His son was the victim here and shot Avila and Adams in self-defense. The audio recording shows over that hour-long meeting, the sheriff promised Squirrel and his family he'd work to get rid of the charges and gave them details of his investigator's case file. Lead investigator Angel Tubbs and Captain Wayne Jordan built that case file, a file the sheriff called a crap investigation. I got to tell Wayne, they screwed up on this case. Well, I don't know what him and Angel were thinking. I don't know what I don't I don't know what I don't know what I hadn't looked at yet. I got case jacket. And there's no there's no video in it. There's no uh, it's about that thing. The medical And I told him I asked him I asked him that. I said you gotta get them bullets. You gotta go get them for you can see if it's the same caliber that shot him. And he, and I said you'll know and he said, you, well, you, you better hope it wasn't your gun. That's what he called me the next day. Yeah. I, we heard it was a 380. And I know you got a And I know you got a 380. You better hope it wasn't yours. Yeah, we they were going to come I and said, get my gun. Why didn't Jordan call me and tell me yes. that? I said, did I not tell you my son didn't have no gun? My 380 is right here at my house. We might have to come and get that for LD. That's exactly what he said. I told, and I told him, I said, you're not coming to my house getting nothing. Because my gun never left my house. No video. This video of Tariq Adams came right out of the sheriff's case file. Did you take any they took, um, Yeah. They took that one out of on his own. See, that don't be another one. I know. I called them and And they said that they came and got the books. They said Churchfield County got the books. Now, that's why I said that would prove everything. The investigators did that. The sheriff's office evidence lock shows investigator Tubbs went to the hospital in Charlotte, collected two bullets that doctors removed from Squirrel's body during surgery, and sent that evidence to SLED. The sheriff's office doesn't yet have the results of the testing from SLED's crime lab. If there's a criticism because someone opens a case file now and they do not see ballistic evidence in there, was that because you guys didn't collect it and didn't send it off to SLED to be processed? Oh no, we definitely collected it and we definitely sent it off. It just, ha the results have not come back. We collected two firearms, numerous shell casings. We sent all that to SLED. Unfortunately, I don't know if, if SLED is so backlogged that we have not gotten those results yet. Matter of fact, just three weeks ago, I got a 2019 case um, back from SLED. Angel Tubbs has logged nearly 40 years in law enforcement. We interviewed her after we obtained the recording about the sheriff's criticisms of her investigation. Tubbs would not listen to it, but wanted to defend her investigation and decision to charge Squirrel. I feel like that if I listen to that tape, that if I'm questioned in the future about what my role was in this case, that it would bias me and I don't think that's fair to anyone. I know I did my job, and I know the people that were criminally charged were the correct people, and, and my victims deserve that. We asked Tubbs about what the sheriff told Chucky Robinson that led the sheriff to believe the wrong man was charged and led the county's top lawman to criticize her investigative work right there in front of the man they're working to convict. Did you do anything with this case differently than you've done anything else in the 40 years in your law enforcement career? No. Took statements, processed the evidence, obtained search warrants. Did you conduct interviews? Absolutely. And were the victims and witnesses willing to talk? Yes. Is that rare given the circumstances? Absolutely is. Normally when we arrive on scene, nobody saw anything. In this incident, both the victims were willing to give statements, not only at the hospital, but after they got out of the hospital. Other major criticisms the sheriff revealed in the recording. The shooting victim's medical records were not in the file, and the sheriff could not find a statement from Squirrel anywhere in the case file. Wayne said he went to the hospital, talked to Squirrel, and he couldn't talk to the Squirrel in surgery. I don't know. I can't say he came or not, because... And then he said... I never seen him And then he said, after Squirrel got out, he already had a lawyer. He couldn't talk to him. Like you know, nobody ever went over there and tried to talk to him. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we was there every day. Who, who, who interviewed Squirrel? 
the vibe. The vibe. That's what I'm saying. Do that. Just that's that's the head. Head. Yes. This is crap from the very beginning. I tried numerous times to interview and was always stonewalled. He was still in the hospital. He was in rehab. He couldn't do it. Calls to the parents, when your child is able, I need to speak with them. Once they got out of the hospital, I, I was I was stonewalled. I, they never would let me speak to this individual. Did it hurt you to gather a statement once you found that this suspect had secured a lawyer and would not be talking to you voluntarily? From all the evidence that we collected on the scene with the statements that we had obtained, it wouldn't have made any difference if I had spoken to the person or not. Because you had the right people. Because I had the right people charged. Investigator Tubbs says that was not the only time Chucky Robinson, the other voice in this recording, got in the way of her investigation. One of my victims, he had told me that one of the suspect's fathers was going around the Coon Creek area and, and the area that he lived in and asking people questions, offering them money not to tell the correct story, just all kind of little things that I felt was, was inappropriate. I relayed that to my supervisors and I even made a call to the, the suspect's father to say, you need to stop. This is not your job. I will find out what happened, but you are not to speak with any individual involved in this case. And that's Chucky Robinson. Yes. In, in a phone call with him, you made it very clear to him Yes, that if it, if it continued, I would pursue criminal charges. Robinson confirmed he got that call from Tubbs threatening to charge him. Robinson says he was only working to gather evidence to prove his son's innocence. And the sheriff's criticisms continued. He also told the Robinsons the former sheriff's investigative unit should have never tried to work that crime scene. I think Angel and Wayne screwed this case up from the very beginning because they charged him before they even waited on him to see if he was gonna live or make it out the hospital. I've been doing this for 42 years, and I ain't never seen a case in Chesterfield County where you got multiple people shot and said didn't come in to process the crime scene. And they ain't called Fred yet on this case, have No. They should have come in and processed the crime scene, then we'd know. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was look. About halfway through the recording, the sheriff tells the Robinsons he believes his investigators charged the wrong man and had his own theory that Squirrel acted in self-defense. And then he says, Noah heard the gun come off. He came out the building and he shot. He, he thought Squirrel shot me. And he still ain't said Squirrel shot him. Tommy King never said Squirrel shot him. He said he thought, he thought, he Noah thought, thought that Squirrel shot him. And he, and he started shooting this squirrel who was running away. The squirrel turned and shot back. The squirrel, squirrel picked the gun up. But Tariq Adams did say that in two separate interviews with investigators. Turned back around with the gun, and he like, oh, and just started busting at everybody. Okay. Busting at Noah, he sent the most, like, no five shots that he got him to know it. And then I caught the last six in my leg. Next thing I know, I just seen shots coming out. He shot me in the leg, um, and then I see shots coming out the door, and he hit the ground, and I hit the ground. And then he continued firing, though, once I'm on top of him on the ground. After that, once I got shot, I get up, and I'm just like, you just shot me, man. You just shot me. Why did you shoot? And he was on the ground just hurting. But Sheriff Cambo Streeter was far from finished. Coming up. The recording is now in the hands of state investigators. So that's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get charged as well. Bernard, I sat in his office. He told me never should have been charged. That never should have been charged. That is absolutely not true. That never happened. We'll talk to you about this recording with Chucky Robinson when this Queen City News investigation continues after this. Chucky Robinson planned to meet us outside SLED's front door when he showed up to interview with them on February 21st. Instead of getting out, he started backing up to leave. He then called me. He says Sled is asking him to come around the back of the building because they did not want the news involved. We were there as Robinson arrived. Didn't want us involved, huh? As Sled agents tried to slip him in through the back door. Chucky, what are you uh, meeting with Sled for? I'm trying to get some answers. On your son's case? It's a couple of things going on that we need to talk about. What made you record the call with the sheriff? attorney wasn't there, so I wanted to make sure I get it to him. 
SLED agents already interviewed multiple people connected to the recording, including Chesterfield County Sheriff Cambo Streeter. It's all part of the criminal investigation SLED opened when they obtained the recording weeks after we began our investigation. What do you think SLED wants to know from you today? I have no idea. Yeah, I'm curious. You here to tell the truth? That's it. When we first met Chucky Robinson last month, he said he had one goal, for someone to reinvestigate his son's attempted murder charges from 2020. He found that someone in Sheriff Cambo Streeter. We'll talk to you about this recording with Chucky Robinson. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard it. You haven't heard it? I have not heard it. You know what you said that day? Uh, I know why I was there. I don't remember everything I said. I'll be honest, it was, what, a month ago maybe? When we found the sheriff last week, he'd already had a call with SLED, but he hadn't yet been formally interviewed. You're sitting in a, in a criminal defendant's home with his parents. You're discussing the elements, the intimate elements of a case file. Do you see anything wrong with that, looking back, sharing well, that information? My, his attorney knew about it. So, no, I don't see anything wrong since his attorney. I did not. I, I, I was there on good faith, Jody. I didn't go there with any... Uh, you know, motive or anything. The sheriff says he was simply gathering information, and despite his promises in the recording to get the charges dropped, he was only working to get someone to reinvestigate Squirrel's cases. You called the case a crap case. Do you believe your investigators screwed this I case up? I think the case uh, could have been investigated a little more thoroughly. I don't want to get into nuts and bolts about it, but I do believe it could have been investigated a little more thoroughly. But the recording shows the sheriff didn't just want the case reinvestigated. He wanted Squirrel's charges dropped. And Sheriff Streeter had already taken steps to get that done when he met with Deputy Solicitor Kennard Redman last fall. Well, I can tell you what, there's some people that are scared, scared of this case. The solicitor says he didn't think it was a good case. Kennard told me he didn't think Squirrel should have been charged. I said, why'd you send it to Columbia? Yeah, uh, if that's what you think, be a man and call it like it is. And yeah. drop the charge. Yeah. Because that's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get charges dropped. The girl, they yeah. do a double on me. I know. They do on cases. They do on cases. They do do that. Kennard, I sat in his office. He told me, he said, okay, he never should have been charged. So, why'd you send it to Columbia then? He said, we can't appear to be by, by. I said, that's crazy. That's top out. So if the sheriff says that Kennard Redman told him squirrels should have never been charged, is that true? That is absolutely not true. That never happened. Never saw the first piece of evidence. I don't know enough about this case to formulate an opinion one way or the other. So yes, it was extremely disappointing and infuriating to hear my name being mentioned in that tape. Another promise the sheriff made to the Robinsons in that recording. If he could not get what he wanted from the solicitor, he'd lean on his friends inside the AG's office. I got a friend working at Tony, and they said they're not going to send the case back. I said, once we get it, we don't send it back. I said, well, here's what you need to do. You need to get one of your investigators, and the, and the one they assigned to it is a good friend of mine. I used to work with him in Columbia. And he sat in my office about two weeks ago, and we went over this case. Uh -huh. And if he gets assigned to do it, he said, I'll go to the prosecutor and tell you, you can't win this case. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they should know it when they look yeah, at they it. They should have just sent it back and said, we're not the prosecutor. And that way we, we get charged yeah. with this mess. That's what ought to happen. This may cost me money, but I, I don't care about that because it's the right thing to do. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. We got to, I will get this clear. Right. I'm going to try my best. I promise you that. Yeah, I told you that. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm sure. I'm sure. Girl? Nah. You don't look that bad, please. Man, they make out like he, they make out like he John Dillinger. <laughs> they make like out like he John Squirrel did it, squirrel did it. And I'm pushing off the envelope on this. I really am. I'm pushing the envelope. And if I don't have any luck, say, and my boy Columbia, and he says, do no, another attorney one, you know, then I'm going to talk. I'll call and make it, make a point. I'll go see Alan Lutz from the attorney general, and I'll sit down and I'll say, this ain't a good case. Mm -hmm. I got more experience than anybody who investigated the street than anybody who looked at this case. Mm -hmm. I said, it ain't a good case. But the sheriff told us he never planned to actually do that. I was not going to go to the attorney general's office. I had a friend of mine that works there. He inquired as if they had the case. I'm still not sure who has it. He didn't know. He couldn't find out. I don't know where the case is. 
I did go to our Fourth Circuit Solicitor's Office and talk to them there. Mm-hmm. And I said, how do we get the case reopened to look at it? I don't. Th- I, I had no ulterior motive, Jody, to do anything with the case other than have it looked at. And there was no deal, no quid pro quo with, with Chucky Robinson or his family? No, sir. I've never taken anything from Chucky Robinson, never asked him for anything. Never will. You know, the public will hear this and, you know, they will make their own minds sure. up about I, what they, they see. make their own mind up. I, I have... I did what I told the man I would do. For some reason, he chose, I think the better question, and I wish what you would investigate, is who paid who for the recording. you have information about that? No, I don't. But, I mean, my gut feeling is somebody paid somebody. I mean, why do you record a conversation? I, you know, I don't understand that. I have never recorded a conversation in my life. You think you put yourself in a bad position, at least? In retrospect, yes. Sure do. You feel like you may have committed some misconduct? Absolutely not. And it's hard for me to think that somebody would let themselves be put in that position or put themselves in that position. It, it, it's, it's dangerous. It's absolutely dangerous. After nearly 40 years in law enforcement, last summer, investigator Angel Tubbs decided to retire. I did not agree with the way the administration was being ran. I didn't leave mad. I just left. She's still a prosecution witness ready to testify in the prosecution of Devonta Squirrel Robinson. The sitting sheriff was not even employed with Chesterfield County Sheriff's Office when this occurred. Anybody can look over a folder, but I've never been asked one question about this case. That to me is very worrisome because were the integrity of our witnesses, our victims, other suspects, other people we interviewed, witnesses, is that going to hurt them? And and that's for a judge and a jury and, and prosecutors to do, not other law enforcement officers. Do you view this as a violation of the public trust? Absolutely, if that's what occurred, absolutely I do. Would you consider that a betrayal? Absolutely, a betrayal to to the citizens of Chesterfield County, a betrayal to the badge, a betrayal to, to officers. A major development happened just last week. The state AG's office washed its hands of this case and assigned the prosecution of Devonta Squirrel Robinson to the Horry County Solicitor's Office far away from Chesterfield County. I asked the AG's office whether it confirmed the sheriff contacted his friends inside that agency. The AG's office did not deny that happened, but did not confirm it either. Sled's in the midst of a criminal investigation into the recording, the sheriff's motivation, and whether any laws were broken. I'm also told SLED is reviewing the 2020 shooting investigation, but we do not know the extent of that review. We also don't have a time frame on when SLED might finish its work on all of this.